Welcome to Bible 360, 1 Timothy. There were some troublesome leaders who were interfering with the teaching of Jesus as Lord in one of the most important new outposts for Christianity, Ephesus. However, there's also a desperate need for the gospel to go just about everywhere else. So instead of going himself, Paul sends Timothy to straighten things out, but he sends them with this letter. Now, Timothy was loyal and zealous to, for the gospel, and he'd served as a missionary under Paul in some of Paul's earlier missionary journeys. Now, Paul's typically writing to large groups of Christians, some of whom were new to the faith, some of whom he barely knew, and some of whom he never met. But when he writes to Timothy, and later Titus, he's writing to co-workers in the gospel with whom he's traveled and talked with extensively, so Paul doesn't have to explain everything to them. He can get more down to brass tacks. For instance, Timothy knows Paul uncharacteristically of his time, considers women worthy of religious instruction and as full participants in the gospel and in salvation. Paul outlines Timothy's task to get the Ephesian church to focus more on the gospel and on daily interactions with other people and less on obsession with legalism. But the law does have a purpose. It's to correct sinners. However, treating laws as if they hold the key to salvation is using the law the wrong way. Likewise, genealogies and histories in the Bible are there to teach us to follow Yahweh faithfully but they are not mysterious codes that unlock hidden powers. These false teachers are overly obsessed with these kinds of details, but their focus should really be upon Jesus who saves sinners. Paul says sinners, such as slave traders, murderers, adulterers, etc., are on the wrong side of God's wrath. However, Paul says if God can save me, he can save anyone. The mercy Jesus showed Paul is proof that the gospel is not about human effort or pedigree, but about the astounding grace of God displayed in Jesus. Those who compromise this faith are faith wreckers who deserve punishment, which will hopefully bring them up to contrition and repentance. Paul instructs Timothy to pray for all authorities and leaders because faithful leaders lead to stability, which makes it easier for Paul to do things like travel and deliver letters without interference. After all, God wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. But focusing on laws, outlandish laws, or extreme rules could never really accomplish salvation. It ends up being a distraction and even a temptation to pull away from the faith. One of the primary motivations for Paul's instructions to Timothy comes down to Christian witness. The Christians were often misunderstood at this time, and their enemies accused them all of all sorts of things. Paul never seeks to compromise on the claim that Jesus is Lord and that we owe allegiance to him. However, he doesn't want to feed into the false narratives that Christians are rabble-rousers, troublemakers, and anarchists. This is why he instructs slaves to be hard workers and masters to be fair. This is why he also instructs women to focus on good deeds and humility and not to be overly obsessed with power through sexual appeal, just like he tells men not to get their way through fists or anger, but by prayer. Uh, Paul instructs women not to be contentious when it comes to the gospel, but rather to embrace the teaching of Christ. Paul has to say these things because some men were fighting, some women were using their sexual appeal, and were being contentious about the gospel. And that's why Paul has to call them out. They were turning people off to the gospel. Now this advice is given particularly in the context of church or Christians worshiping and living together as a community which makes a lot of sense. Church is not about being sexy, getting your way, or influencing others. It's about Jesus and serving God's coming kingdom. Paul gives guide and guidelines for those who work in different leadership positions in the church. He calls for overseers and deacons to be respectable men, both in the broader community and in the own congregation. They should be capable enough to take care of their own families before they try taking care of the church family. Their wives should also be good people. Leaders should be good teachers, not quarrelsome, greedy, or out of control in any way. This is not being picky or overly controlling. The people, their conduct, their lives and fellowship together, this is where Christ is present. And they give witness to the world through their conduct and reputation. Interaction with this world and reputation matter when it comes to sharing the gospel. Evil and good both eventually become blatantly obvious. And Paul wants the church to have their reputation as good people, not troublemakers. Those who obsess about what people eat and forbid things like marriage are hypocrites, Paul says. God's world is good, and his message is clearly given in Jesus. There's no need for extra crazy stories or extravagant rules or rites. Those things tend to build up individuals while tearing apart the church and relegating the gospel of Jesus to background status. Paul instructs Timothy not to be intimidated by those who oppose him. He should confront both selfish leaders and those who are being led astray. Paul clarifies that Timothy should respectfully and kindly correct both older men and younger men. The church also had organized a way to take care of widows and 
Paul wants that to continue. But he doesn't want single women who are capable of working to take advantage of the church's system just because they're widows. Those who are sleeping around are not to be included, nor are those who are lazy or simply stirring up trouble with drama and gossip. Furthermore, Paul says that families should take care of widows if it's within their capability, and it's shameful if a family can but won't. As for workers in the church, they should receive their livelihood. After all, they need to eat too. Yet Paul balances this, first of all, by condemning false teachers who don't teach the sound doctrine of the Lord. He roundly condemns the love of money. Be content with what you have because the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Timothy is instructed to warn the rich furthermore and not to become arrogant or greedy, but to share and to find their security in Christ, not in their finances. True treasure is found in the kingdom of God, not in purses or wallets. Paul closes by telling Timothy to not just spout out by whatever is trending, but rather to faithfully preach the gospel of Jesus.